Hey guys, in this video I'll tell you step by step process to apply permanent residency of Australia. I'll tell you the details about it, which all documents are required, the recent rule changes and details about PR grant as well. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Hello guys, this is Shitan Shu from Dream Abroad. If you want to immigrate to Canada or Australia without paying hefty fee to the consultants, please visit my channel, I've got many videos. Also, I do post videos every week, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. Now let me tell you that I've divided the complete process into five simple steps. So let me list out all those steps for you and then I'll discuss all those steps in detail. So the first step would be checking eligibility, if you're eligible or not. The second step is English test. The third step is skill assessment. The fourth step is expression of interest and the last step is submitting your application. After that you'll be given PR grant and we will talk in detail about it as well. Okay now let's discuss all of these in detail. So number one step one is eligibility check. So checking your eligibility is the first and foremost thing which you should do and you can do it online there are two steps in it and the first step would be occupation check. So you have to check if your occupation is listed out in the in-demand occupation list or not. Now they've done the categorization and most of the occupations are listed out so you don't have to worry your occupation will be there. The number two is points check. Now you have to check your points in the points table. Points are awarded based on the various criteria like age, your work experience, your English proficiency, the state sponsorship or other factors as well. So you have to calculate your points and you have to check your occupation in the in-demand occupation list whether it is there or not. So now let me tell you that the minimum points for eligibility is now 65 points. So when you count your points, you have to calculate it accordingly and you know, you have to check if you reach the 65 mark criteria or not, 50, 65 points criteria or not. Now this 5 points actually got increased on 1st of July 2018. So before 1st of July until 30th of June 2018, the minimum requirement was 60 points. So of course they have they have kind of you know made the process a bit tougher but I'm sure they were getting many applications and most of the applic applicants sometimes you know have uh, you know have points above 60 so they've kind of raised the bar okay now this was the first step now let's talk about the second step English test the Australian immigration system accepts a number of different internationally accepted English testing systems to measure the rank applicants and rank applicants overall English ability. So you can go through IELTS, you can appear for PTE academic, you can appear for OET which is occupational English test, you can also appear for TOEFL IBT, uh, you can also appear for Cambridge Assessment English which is CAE. So obviously uh, there, there are like five different tests you can appear for any one of them and according to the score which you get you'll be awarded points and you'll, you'll, you'll get the points and you'll be ranked in their queue. Okay now step three skill assessment. This is very important and very crucial so please pay attention now. Every occupation has a designated skill assessment authority linked to it and skill assessment can be conducted only by that authority. Now let's uh, suppose okay let me just uh, show you which all authorities are there so for software engineers there would be Australian Computer Society which is ACS for electrical mechanical civil biomedical and other engineers this engineers Australia um, skills related to medical field there's medical board of Australia these are just three examples how you can find it when you'll find the occupation you'll actually find the assessment body over there ass assessing authority over there so it's very easy I'll I'll, de I'll explain it to you in detail in, an, in my next video how to find it 
So skill assessment authority is an organization which is responsible for comparing skills, education and work experience of a visa applicant to Australian standards. Documents related to education and work experience need to be submitted and payment of around 500 Australian dollars needs to be done at this point. Now this may vary from one organization to the other but the roughly the this is just the rough estimate of the payment. Documents for education includes mark sheet and degree certificates and documents for work experience include reference letters, affidavits and you know work experience letters. So I'll make separate videos for all of these steps so I'll discuss all these steps in detail. So this was about skill assessment. Step 4 expression of interest which is also called EOI. So EOI is a method of showing your interest in applying for a skilled visa to migrate to Australia. It is an online form in skill select now skill select is, a, is an application so you didn't need not worry about that it's an online form in skill select which asks a series of questions about your skills depending on the visa subclass you select so they basically there are four there, sorry there are three visa subclasses visa 189 visa 190 and 489 so you have to select your uh, visa subclass over there Details related to education, work experience, family, skills assessment and language test are supposed to be entered while you are filling up the form for your UI. Now based on the information provided in the application, points will be calculated by them. So earlier you calculated your points according to you through the points table, now they'll, they will calculate and they will assess you. Based on the number of points and in demand jobs, you will get an invitation. There's no timeline decided for this invite, so probably someone who has got 75 points, there are high chances that he would, he or she would get the invite first. Somebody with 65 points would get it later on. Any change in detail can be updated in your EOI and there's no payment required at this particular step. So this is free of cost, you can create your EOI. But you can only create it after you are done with your skill assessment and your English test because all because both of these details actually needs to go in there. You cannot provide wrong information over there or your application obviously will be rejected. So after your English test and skill assessment you can go for your EOI. Okay, step 5 submitting your application. After getting the invite you have been given 2 months time to submit the application, uh, the documents and do the payment. Now, I suppose earlier it was three months uh, because it was divided into two parts. You have to do you have to do the payment first and then after that you were given around one month time to submit the documents. But now it is two months time you have been given to submit the documents and do the payment at the same time. So payment of around 36 170 Australian dollars is required for primary applicant, the half is for the spouse and one fourth of the primary applicant is for the children, for each child. Uh, documents which are required, very important. So there are three categories of documents. The first one is the personal documents. The You need be required to submit the birth certificate, the passport pages, educational documents, you know, identity document issued by government, marriage or divorce certificates and police clearance certificates as well. Immigration documents, you need to submit your English test result and skill assessment result. Now earlier when you submitted the EOI, they didn't ask for any document, right? So they did ask for the documents in the skill assessment time, but not at the EOI time. So you just entered your details and obviously you should have entered the right details they would be matched they would be matching it with your english test result uh, the, the reference letter which you get from ielts or any other any other authority and the uh, skill assessment result as well now work experience documents you should uh, be having your appointment letters your experience certificates income tax documents promotion letters leaving letters and salary slips from all the employers once a case officer has been assigned you'll be asked to go for the, your medical examination and this will be 
for all of your family members whosoever is going to Australia okay so guys uh, this was the uh, five complete steps how you can you know plan your uh, your PR application to Australia now let me tell you something about PR grant so after you submit the application it might take several months for a decision on your application you know it generally varies from one visa subclass to the other subclass I'll make separate videos on that so let me tell you about the processing times uh, you know it's let letting like uh, you know four months to seven months something like that so I'll, I'll tell you in detail in different videos if all your documents are correctly verified you would be given a PR grant or visa grant notification letter that explains the conditions of your visa including the period of validity and entry requirements so you'd be given a timeline in by that in by the end of that validity period you have to reach Australia land Australia for the first time at least you can come back obviously but you have to land there for the first time in that uh, time of period also uh, you the visa stamping and passport is not required like in the case of uh, Canada it's not required here as we as Australia works on e-visas now and your visa would be checked through an electronic visa record which is obviously an e-visa so guys this was it this was the uh, five steps and details about PR grant I would be uploading more videos on each step one by one from uh, this week onwards starting from the eligibility check so thanks for watching please like and share this video with your friends who actually need to know the process and also subscribe the channel if you haven't subscribed it yet thank you so much